So welcome everybody. Ready to start our next session. It's how uh, FIDO CTAP 2.1 can help deployment at scale for enterprises. Our speaker is uh, Eve Massard, who's the Product uh, Management Director from HID Global. So welcome. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Yves Massard. I'm with HID Global. And uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, how FIDO CTAP 1.2 can help deployment at scale for enterprises. So you've been hearing about FIDO the, the whole week, and it's pretty clear that FIDO is the path forward for identity authentication. But where are we in terms of its adoption? And this is HID's views on where we are in that journey. Um, and we think that depending on the organization and the, the users that you serve, you might be in a different place. Um, we think that, uh, for example, uh, um, consumers and small organizations are already in the, in the path of uh, growth in terms of uh, uh, deploying FIDO, whereas larger organizations, financial services, government might be still in the introduction phase um, because they have different needs than, uh, than those other organizations. So if we look a little bit into, into in details, consumer market, you'll see that they tend to be more self-service oriented and focus purely around authentication. Um, and that, that fits very neatly with uh, FIDO and how FIDO came about, right? So it's, uh, it's, it's easier for them to be able to deploy uh, that technology. Whereas uh, enterprise organizations have many additional requirements that they need to address beyond just pure authentication. Uh, they might need to not just provide FIDO credential and let the user register themselves, but they might need to actually issue those credentials on behalf of their users. And up until now, it's not something that was um, really available for, for organization. Uh, they also have a lot of uh, compliance and regulatory requirement that tends to also to change over time. Um, and uh, that may also delay the adoption of FIDO in those organizations. And then they might have a bunch of additional use cases that they need to cater. They might have line of business application that needs to be adapted specifically for FIDO. They might have additional um, use cases like uh, uh, being able to still cater to badges for physical access, cafeteria, parking, and so on. So now the good news is that FIDO 2.1 actually address many of those needs. Um, we're going to talk about those now. Uh, first, I'm going to talk a little bit about Passkey. Uh, so Passkey technically is not changes that comes with FIDO 2.1. Um, a lot of things rely on the existing CTAP 2.0 and and and. Uh, web of uh, 2.0. Uh, however, those changes are being implemented right now, and they will have a direct impact, I believe, also for enterprise customers. And so, uh, very quickly, uh, you've heard, you probably have seen those sessions earlier about Passkey. So Passkey is a FIDO credential that can be used seamlessly across all of user devices. And so what that means for enterprise organization, a lot of the benefit that applies to consumer will also apply to them. The ability, for example, to have one device that you can, one authenticator that can be used to initiate your session across multiple devices and then be able to use those devices moving forward without necessarily using the initial authenticator. It's something that enterprise needs very often. When you think about it, um, your enterprise users, they might have multiple workstations. They will probably have a phone, a laptop, maybe a different desktop, maybe a tablet as well. And so the ability to be able to um, use those different devices, and if you lose or forget your FIDO authenticator, still be able to authenticate on those, um, on those uh, computing platforms because you have uh, initialized a passkey on those is, is quite, quite important, right? What that means for a large organization that might have tens or twenties different credentials and applications, that means that if you lose your, your FIDO security key or if you're FIDO authenticator is on your phone and you lose it, or you get a new one, it's damaged, you need to get a new one. Now you don't need to re-register in those, all those tens or twenties applications, one by one on each devices. Now you can just, uh, you can just uh, rely on the, the passkey and its ability to be available on multi-devices to be able to continue your work uh, seamlessly without any interruption. So that's, that's a major uh, improvement for enterprises. It means less, uh, less uh, downtime for the employees that you know, 
lost their phone or lost their security key, and also less time spent by the IT folks trying to bootstrap them and get them back up to speed. So that's a, that's a very big benefit. Um, I, I think you know I think what's coming out really is going to make an impact right away. Um, you've heard that there's still some evolution that will come along. The ability, for example, to do uh, um, uh, sync across uh, across uh, the different platforms. That's something that's going to come a little bit later. So there is uh, there is still room for improvement, but I think Passkey is going to be. Uh, um, a major impact for a lot of our organization that wants to deploy uh, FIDO and passwordless uh, for their employees or their contractors. Um, it's not going to cover everything, right? There's still organizations that might have uh, uh, additional requirements that Passkey might not need. Um, some of those requirements might be, might be uh, regulation. Um, uh, think federal organization that might have a need for a uh, FIPS 140 uh, certified device, or uh, maybe it's uh, an European or Asian organization that needs to have a common criteria certified device. Uh, Passkey today would not necessarily address those, uh, but there's still a majority of people that it will um, uh, positively impact. So next, let's uh, zero down on the changes in FIDO 2.1. Uh, some of those are on security and compliance. Um, so FIDO 2.1 enable a new option that will bring the ability to enforce pin change. Um, so what that means is, for example, your administrator might initialize your FIDO device for you. Um, and then the next time you're going to use that FIDO security key, you will have to change your pin code before you can use it. What that enables is use cases where your administrator provision those, those um, um, uh, that security key, and then it can be handed out to the user, knowing that the user will be forced to change the pin instead of uh, keeping the you know one one two two three three pin that the the, the security uh, uh, that the IT person might have set up, right? So that way you will have a a device that uh, uh, doesn't have the same pin that everybody else in your organization has been given to. Uh, so that's uh, that's quite important in being able to enable those supervised issuance scenarios. Um, and, and of course, uh, as a user, you might, if it's a device that's got a fingerprint, uh, uh, a biometric capability, you'll be able then to enroll your own biometric after that, making it really your own security key. Um, another another uh, enhancement that's coming in FIDO 2.1 is uh, the ability to enforce minimum pin length. Um, uh, so if, uh, if you're using a pin code on your security key, um, uh, today, there was not a, a way to enforce the minimum pin length. Uh, now, uh, you'll be able to enforce that. And that's uh, very important for regulated organizations that might have a security policy, where before they might not have been able to deploy uh, FIDO security key without that capability. Um, it'll also be helpful in terms of um, uh, getting a security certification, like FIX140, that uh, uh, requires a certain entropy in the in the pin code to be allowed to, to get to a certain level like uh, uh, FIPS level 2 or FIPS level 3. Another change that's coming in FIDO CTAP 2.1 is the ability to always require user verification. <clears throat> um, so previously in FIDO 2.0, the user verification is something that um, uh, the device could advertise However, the relying party could choose to ignore that, uh, which means that uh, if you wanted to deploy a, a security key that always force you to authenticate, not just press the button, but actually do a, a fingerprint authentication or do a, a, a pin entry, um, you, as an organization issuing those devices, you are not sure um, if uh, this would be, the policy would be honored, because uh, it really depends on how the, the relying party was, uh, uh, was, was developed. Uh, now with uh, CTAP 2.1, uh, you can actually enforce that where the device is going to enforce it instead of relying on the relying party making the decision whether to enforce it or not. Uh, the reason why this is important is it will help you meet a certain level of FIPS 140-3 certification. So if you're in a regulated industry or if you're in the federal government, uh, you, will, you will need that to really fully uh, meet the the proper level of uh, FIPS compliance. So if you need FIPS level two, if you need FIPS level three, uh, that, is a, that is a capability that you need. Otherwise, you, um, you could only meet with uh, level one before. Um, oh. 
Next, uh, we also have the ability to support a, a large blob inside the device. So what that means is that you can, along with the credential, so meaning you have a FIDO security key, you might have, uh, you might have registered with four applications, each of those is a credential in the security key. So along with each of those credentials, you'll be able to store a large amount of data in, um, uh, in the security. Uh, large in quote because you know we're not we're not talking uh, uh, you know uh, uh, tens of megabytes but uh, still much more much more than the metadata that you could store before. Uh, so this could be used to enable new use cases. One of those is uh, uh, being able to implement digital certificates with a FIDO security key, where the digital certificate could be stored inside um, uh, inside that large blob. Um, and this opened up a new, new scenario that you couldn't do before with a, with a FIDO 2.0 security key. Um, scenario like uh, application that might today support uh, certificate-based authentication but have not been adapted yet for FIDO. Uh, now you would be able to, with the same security key, support those applications. Another scenario is also offline authentication. Um, so if you have, uh, if you're in an environment where you have um, Authentication that maybe needs to be done more at the edge, where the edge might not have an always-on connectivity to the network. You might not be able to go back to your relying party or the IDP to perform the authentication. Um, using certificate-based authentication, uh, your edge application uh, would be able to authenticate the, uh, the, the person coming with the security based on the certificate. The certificate is dig digitally signed. If the edge application trusts the issuing certificate, uh, then the edge application would be able to verify that's the, the right person that's coming, do the challenge response with the private key that's in the, the FIDO device and check that against the public key that's in the digital certificate. And so you would be able to authenticate uh, uh, persons that uh, comes to uh, an edge environment where connectivity back to, uh, to an IDP might not be possible and uh, until now using a security key in a, in a pure FIDO, uh, Tudoto um, uh, type of environment would not have been possible. Another capability is also enterprise attestation. So FIDO already had the option to store an attestation in the device. Um, essentially, this can be used as a way to verify which device, the, the relaying party can verify which device it's talking to. And you could have, for example, configured your relaying party to only know um, uh, the use of security key that were produced by a specific uh, vendor or your supplier, for example. Um, this goes one step further. It, it adds another attestation that's specific to the enterprise. Um, and so it can be uh, provisioned by the, the device vendor, but it makes sure that it's only the device that you purchase from that vendor uh, that uh, would then be used uh, in your relying party application. So it's a way to lock down uh, which, uh, which authenticator can be used in your IT environment. Um, and uh, it's a way to uh, uh, tighten up, in a way, the, the, uh, the supply chain. Because by, uh, by enforcing that, you can really be sure that it's the devices that you ordered from the manufacturer that your users are trying to use. And if they procure that different device, even from that manufacturer, you'd be able to set that aside um, and, and only accept the ones that you ordered. Uh, there's also an option in there to also put the, uh, uh, the application that can be used by that device as well. So you can really tighten up how the security key is used only for your application for no, no other purpose. So that, uh, that completes it. Uh, do you, if you have any questions, happy to, happy to answer them. Thanks very much, uh, Rizar Asul, Real Networks. Um, can you tell me how does the authenticator, let's say a roaming authenticator, authenticate the relying party or authenticate whoever's making the challenge? So it's a reverse question. For, for, uh, for the, the case with the large blob where we put a... No, no, no. no. Just, just general uh, FIDO? Just reg regular FIDO. How does the um, uh, authenticator know the veracity of... Of, of the relying party that's that's connecting to it, that's making the challenge. Yeah, so that's that's an area that's not changed in the FIDO 2.1. It's still the 
it's still the same uh, the same mechanism that was available in uh, FIDO 2.0. So um, it's, it's just the source, the 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 the, um, the, the URL. Yes. The relying party. ID. Yeah. Okay, and you just got to trust that that's it. It's not uh, it's not uh, um, signed in any way. Or no, there's no change there. Okay. Any other questions? All right, well, very much. Uh, thank you. Oh, hey, um, thank you for that presentation. That was very enlightening. Um, one question uh, for uh, FIDO 2.1. Um, what is actually required um, to uh, kind of update to that? So I guess you will need um, to update the actual uh, authenticators themselves. But also, that takes some, uh, it'll take some development, right, to uh, enable some of the new features. Is that how it works? Yeah, absolutely. So you'll, need a, you'll probably need a newer device that implements the, the changes in the spec that were done between FIDO 2.0 and FIDO 2.1. So that enables the, the client side, the device side, uh, for those scenarios. And then your relying party also needs to uh, evolve to be able to take advantage of those extra capabilities as well. Uh, so you need to you need to adjust uh, both sides to be able to take uh, advantage of those capabilities. Now it's backward compatible, so if you you could use a FIDO 2.1 compliant device uh, that implements all those new things, still with your existing uh, FIDO 2.0 uh, relying party. So you can uh, uh, you can deploy that uh, at uh, at the pace that would work for your organization. All right, well, thank you very much, Eve. Great presentation. Thank you. Thank you.